Today we're assisting a friend who's having difficulty with the selection mechanism on her brother 710. This is a push button machine. I have a push button machine that's a different model and we'll use it for the demo. They are all more alike than different. She's going to explain on her video the problem in her own words and we are using her video with permission. Hello. So, when I first got this, it was like this. It hasn't really worked. This works manually if I push it back and forth. And the set lever will push it out once because I've just connected it with this <laughs> over the top screw. Um, just to show you, because it looks like there was a screw there that isn't there before. But it won't come back. See, nothing's happening with the with this. Um, I'm not sure what you call this, but here. Um, yeah, I wonder what's making it if these bits need to be connected somehow. Um, yeah, any thoughts would really help. All right, we have a knitting friend with a push button machine, and she's having trouble with this activation lever. And let me point out if the camera can see there's a roller right there and that roller pushes against this stob that's under that area right there and that's what activates your selection All right that is a roller and it when it comes over it touches the underside of this stob right here and it's when the lever pushes, that roller goes over and pushes this. That's what activates our, and that's what activates your selection. Now notice, screwdriver, 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 screwdriver. The reason I've done that is this is the activation bar right here. And you'll notice it's tied into this set of levers, this set of levers, and all the way on the other end, there's another identical set of levers. They're not absolutely identical because this is an anchor spot on this end and this is the activating spot on this end. But what I've got is all my little screwdrivers holding this rod up and separating it there and there. And the reason is so I can get these screws out and back in again. See, underneath here is a threaded boss that this screw goes into. This is missing on our friend's machine. She stuck something down in there that was too long, and each one of these screws has a little collar on it that allows it to go into the hole, and the collar rotates. So you see that this hole right here is bigger, these things will get away from me, than this screw. So that's room for the collar to sit right there like that. So it's meant to be a rotatable, loose setup. Right, that is the roller for this lever to be able to go back and forth in the slot and move this rod. So the screw is holding it in place, but the levers here are rotating around that collar. So my friend can come over like I did and take this screw out. This is the collar for this screw. Take it out, match it up, and find a little bushing that size. You could probably get someone to measure this for you and cut a little piece of steel tubing or brass tubing, or copper tubing. But it needs to be that inside diameter and that outside diameter, and all that can be measured, and then you cut it. I know what you're going to say, that you would go to Fastenal if you were in the U.S., but our associate is in the U.K., and we're not sure about the resources there. Would a machine shop have the right tools to measure it? Yes. 
Anybody with a micrometer can measure inside diameter, outside diameter, and the thickness from top so to bottom. So some hobbyists in all sorts of fields. Oh yeah, have, oh yeah. yeah. And it, micrometers are not as expensive as they used to be anyway. No, so no. You can... the digital ones work now, uh, and they're cheap. Um, I'm going to start this back in, and it's important that you keep this lined up with that threaded boss. Now the easy way is to extract the collar, put the collar on the screw, like so. I don't know if my big fat hands got in the way, but put the collar on the screw, hold the collar with your tip of your finger so you can see where the threads are and start it, then a little wiggle wiggle and the collar should drop down. Now what I'm going to do is snug this up so it can't get away because it wants to get away. See it's not quite lined up right so you gotta... You're holding something with your right hand to make it align? Yeah what I'm doing is I'm actually flexing this gear See, I'm moving the selector rod just a little bit because I've got it held there and so this is doing nothing. I'm wiggling it just a little bit and you can see it wiggling these levers to get that collar to drop down and with minimal amount of pressure we screw this down. There you go. Now we're you know, cooking. I would like to review. You found that another screw position has the same size and type of screw, right? The the one in the middle. See, so this it, plate and this plate are absolutely identical. So she's not totally out of resources by having a missing screw and collar because she has one to measure. That is correct. Right. And here's what I'm going to do is get this one out. Since See, you, this rod wants to drop down because of the spring tension on it the minute you pull these screws out. And so that's why this one is holding the rod up. This one is separating the two and hopefully keeping my threaded boss lined up so that I can just move this a little bit, which is all I've got, but just enough to line that up. Now here we go again. Here's the process. There's the collar on the screw. Then you hold it with your fingertip up at the top of the screw so you can see your threads and start it in. And we've got to get the collar to drop down. screw is definitely started so we're going to start all this stuff out of the way. Now the lever is in control of it again. Now if you'll notice it is very very stiff. It is not wanting to move like it's supposed to because the collar was binding the screw against the rod instead of dropping down into its spot. Now, oh, that's much how, better. Yeah, see that's how smoothly it should be. I know I should have said smooth. Yes, uh, you should. <laughs> but, yes, if you'll notice, the action here is mirrored by the action here, and the configuration down here is slightly different, but the action is exactly the same. Now, now I noticed our friend's video shows, I believe that piece looks askew to me. Okay, one of the reasons is because this is not in the right configuration. If you'll notice, the, the movement stops when our little collar underneath here reaches the end of that slot. That's the stop spot. Okay, and you can hear it bottoming out. And it does that for all three of these. So the reason this is askew is because this one's not properly affixed with its spacing collar. It's she, All she did was like I do with my screwdriver to align things. She just stuck a screw down in there. Now if the screw is too long, it's going to cause a problem, but it means this is not in sync with these. 
also, without the collar, it can't function correctly, am I right? That is correct. So she's got to somehow improvise the collar. Right. And like I said, any piece of metal tubing that fills the bill. You... Now, we have to confess this machine is not working right. It's not selecting smoothly. Now, this part is as good as it gets. Now, I'm going to hold this if I can and let you see there's that roller right there that's the actual actuator and I'm pushing on it now. But see, this spring is the return spring. She was saying that you can move the lever back and this selector rod doesn't come back. And for brother users, here are the staples. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the card reader operates off the cam, that white nylon camshaft. And that's exactly what this push button machine does old school. We know that this one needs some lubrication and cleaning in the area of the needle selectors and I also have a worn out sponge bar which gets in the way of proper action so we're going to address those two problems separately. Alright now I'm going to push the button and you can see that it's a manual slide inside the button right there but it won't lock into place. Darn what's up? It's because just like the brother card reader it is gravity activated. So in any other position other than this, they're not going to work right. See, now it locked. Yeah. Because the side lever, and I will show you, that's because this lever is the lock lever. And it operates when the button gets low enough, gravity lets this go over. Notice the position of the one that's locked. It's all the way towards the activating lever. And look at the rest of them. They're just floating. So this is one of the places we need to do some serious lubricating. 